Kathy Rajan Shaker. I'm uh, originally from Canada, but work in Kenya as the Chief Innovation Officer at Jacaranda Health. I'm Henry Jogudongo. At Jacaranda, I am a systems and data analyst. I'm Paulina Fnasineo. I'm a help desk agent at Jacaranda Health. Um, I respond to questions from our clients. These are our moms uh, who ask questions about pregnancy and baby. Um, so where are you located right now? And uh, ensure that they are referred to help. Jay Patel, technology and analytics manager um, from Kenya. I integrate and drive our systems and manage our data. Jokaranda Health is a nonprofit organization uh, that was founded in 2011. Um, and the focus was to create solutions to improve maternal and newborn health outcomes here in Kenya. Um, we started off by you know, setting up our own private hospital, uh, which is just outside of Nairobi but quickly realized that solutions need to be delivered through government hospitals in Kenya to actually truly impact the most women around the country. And so now our focus is, is to deliver better solutions um, that improve health outcomes for moms and babies uh, across the country. We're a small company uh, and we're not a tech company. Uh, even within the organization, the tech team is very small. So it had to be something we could pick off the shelf and get running with the uh, a minimum of effort. Uh, number two was cost. Again, our, uh, we're a small organization, our budgets are not very big, uh, and eventually the goal is for the government to pick up some of this uh, to help uh, share the cost uh, for the, the messages that we send out. And so we didn't want something that was very expensive or down the line that would be very difficult to maintain. And so we tried uh, several different solutions. We tested five and uh, shortlisted three and then did some testing and iterating before we uh, before we uh, came with the or resulted in the final one that we were going to be using uh, the machine learning uh, tool platform when we work in government hospitals we realize that there are two major challenges um, that are facing women around the country the first is moms aren't empowered with information to seek care at the right time and place. Um, and the second is when they get to a facility, they need to receive uh, higher quality care. So to tackle the first challenge, um, we decided to use a digital health solution, um, recognizing that the majority of mothers around the country uh, at least have access to a feature phone, because um, cell phone penetration is so high in Kenya. And we said, well, why can't we have a conversation with these mothers, engage them and inform them about their pregnancy, or their newborn baby and give them the opportunity to ask questions um, because many moms have questions, uh, especially during pregnancy and after. Um, so we set up a platform called Prompts, uh, which is a free for the mom two-way SMS messaging platform. Um, they access the service either when they find out they're pregnant or the first time they visit a facility, sign up for it and then receive um, informative messages, but also have the ability to ask uh, questions of a help desk agent. And to date, uh, we've launched in five counties across the country um, and have enrolled over 100,000 moms on the platform. Ishala za hatari wakati mtu wako na miba. So ni kwa gumi minafulahia sana. Pia wana kuwa device, wana kushauli vinyo utakuwa ukilala. Ukipata hizo, hizo ishala za hatari. Wana kuelezea vinyo utaenda hospitali, utakibia alaka. Na wana kuwabia kila kitu, kiu wana shida yote utu uaulize. Kwa hivyo mimi kwa gumi menisaidia. Na sijaona eni chagamoto, sijaona eni challenge kwa kwangu. Kwa mana uwe wana nijibu. Kini pia hata mimi nimeweza kusaidia wa mama wengine hata wenye hawajaanza clinic nimeweza kuelezea umuhimu wa hiyo namba kutuma na pia kupewa ushauri kwa maana hata mimi nimesaidika One of the biggest challenges we face is that moms have a lot of questions so 
um, we realized that to be able to tackle those questions, we needed a more efficient system. So for example, if we receive you know, 500 questions a day, 70% of those questions are quite uh, general, like what should I be eating during pregnancy? Uh, but 30% of those questions can be potential red flag questions. So they could be danger signs that the mom is experiencing. She might be bleeding and not know it's a problem. And we realize that if we're getting all these questions every day, we need a way to prioritize and answer those questions rapidly. We have a system uh, that is the M Health system, known as the Lapid Pro, a system that we have customized depending with the, what we need moms to get or to receive. And uh, what happens within this system is that uh, oh, we have set all the campaigns depending with the daytime for moms to receive them at the right time. But at the same time, uh, we also allow, or we have connected it directly to the flash desk and in between the bots comes, eh? whereby every other time that moms ask a question, uh, it comes directly into the system. And uh, for a while or after, say an hour, the, system, the bot will take the question to the flash desk and the flash desk team will take the question and we share back to the months within uh, one hour again. We are able now to categorize the questions as agent, medium, high or low priority, whereby once I log in, I'm able to respond to the danger signs very quickly before I can check on the other priorities. We start down and we already know like uh, the priorities of the messages or the which the messages the messages that are more detailed than others. I think so far we have over ten uh, categories of those messages. Yeah, right from all the way from moms, uh, danger signs for moms, danger signs for the baby, and so on. When we started, we weren't really very familiar with the machine learning space. So it was a bit of a learning curve getting used to it. Uh, but as I mentioned, some of these off-the-shelf solutions that are now available are much easier to pick up than trying to roll your own uh, instance of TensorFlow or uh, PyTorch and things like that. Uh, one uh, challenge was labeling the data. Uh, getting these systems to a place where you can actually use it and have it be useful you need to train it on data. And we, at the beginning, we had enough, I think, that we could get it going. We have a lot more now. And as time has gone on, we've actually upgraded and retrained the systems. But one challenge is when you have hundreds of thousands of questions that you want to train the machine on, you have to label every single one with an intent. And that has become, as we grow and as we get more questions, that's becoming a more of a challenge. All the questions we get are run through a translation uh, first. Uh, and in fact, what we've noticed is that about 70% of um, mistranslations or, sorry, um, uh, misclassification of intents, 70% uh, of those are due to errors in the translation. And so that is one thing, one major challenge we're facing is that uh, incorrect translation is causing to misclassification of intents. So far, uh, our moms receive Christians eh, in two languages, mostly, that is English and Swahili. And uh, as you know, the, most of them ask questions on their languages, like uh, Sheng and so on. So what BOT does is to translate this information coming from moms and translate it to English or uh, dialect and nice Swahili uh, in a way that they can be able to get it. So after translates, it is able or in a position to prioritize all the messages coming from months, whether it should go as a priority or as a lower priority or a medium and so on. So when it said this, uh, it said the message, it, it, it consists of what called a label. And through this label, our help desk can be able to see whether this, uh, uh, this is an, an emergency question that I need to respond quickly, or maybe to take some time before maybe responding. So the board generates in a position to categorize this into priorities. When a mom goes to a health facility visit, 
we ask her, were you treated, with the, how was your visit? Can you tell us more about that? And so we're applying uh, intent, uh, sorry, sentiment analysis along with the machine learning uh, platform that, or the text classification in order to try and rate some of these or try and get um, uh, scores, uh, 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 scores about what moms are feeding back to us. We can use these then to feed back to the facilities so that they can improve their service. Um, just recently, we, we didn't really, we weren't comfortable with the accuracy, comfortable enough with the accuracy that we want to auto-respond to mums, but we've gotten our models good enough now that we think we can experiment with um, auto-responses on lower priority uh, questions like nutrition questions. Uh, similarly, once we uh, analyze that, we want to explore even with higher priority questions because those are the ones that we need a very quick response. And sometimes by the time the help desk gets uh, to the question, uh, a faster response uh, is necessary uh, than what often with our volumes the help desk can manage all the time. And uh, so we're going to be experimenting with that. and. We'll always have a human in the loop. We don't want uh, machines talking to the moms, um, but we do want to make sure that faster responses are provided, but then the help desk follows up, uh, you know, with the, human, uh, with the human touch. One of the most important areas that is Africa-specific and Kenya-specific. I think researchers need to spend time um, building our understanding of natural language, Swahili, Sheng, local languages, regional languages, because the technology is only as good as the data corpus it's built around. Um, in addition, I think collaborators such as ourselves and other partners in the space can feed into that uh, research by sharing the kind of data corpus we have um, just to create a better overall system for us being able to help the end user, which in our case is a mom. We don't have enough data to, to train our own model on, um, on Swahili intents. Or, or on questions that we get in Swahili. And um, yeah, I think that is one area that we could use help on. Uh, if other organizations are working on that, that's something we would like to explore with them. Well, what's really interesting is the, the kind of depth of information you're getting from mothers as they're texting you is quite significant. So you're learning about not only the question they're asking, but also, for example, sentiment uh, in terms of analysis. Uh, what is their perception of care at a facility and can we automatically extract that? Um, can we learn about contextual factors like location and layer that onto uh, some of the issues we're able to pick out through just the basic intent mapping? Um, so I think it's just, we've just scratched the surface on the kind of information that we can pick out um, from this data. Yeah, we're looking to expand our partnerships with government hospitals. As I mentioned, we have the client-focused tools. We've also expanded our provider-focused training and mentorship tools. And where we're going in the future is not only the kind of scale in terms of partnering with more facilities, but also expanding the depth of that partnership. And data and data science and machine learning are going to be critical to that. Can we learn quickly to improve the kind of care that's provided in these facilities? And can we leverage technology to be able to do that? So I'm pretty excited about the future and these kind of tools that we've just started to use in their application and our solutions in the future.